Hi there, I'm Stefan Sam, founder of Julian.io IT Consulting. We focus on Julia Consultancy in Central Europe. Today I'm going to show you where trades, especially the new Ambiguity Resolution System. So let's go into it. For those who don't know where trades, it gives you access to an extended where syntax. You can use Boolean functions, like you see here on the left in the example with is odd to define your dispatch. You can also use type checks, like you see in the second example with the iterator size and has shape. You can also use subtype relationships. And internally, good to know, all these three are represented as subtype relationships. So there's a big comparison between rare traits and other traits. And because there's not much time in the lightning talk, I just leave this with you and focus on the most important parts. So if you want to have a trait which comes together with interface functions, so where they are really tied to the traits definition, where traits is not for you. Check out binary traits or even more restrictive canonical traits, which really defines like fully typed and enforced interfaces like Haskell or Rust type classes. But if you think like where traits or other packages like um, the functions and the dispatch, they are loosely bind, so more by convention, then where traits is for you. And it really tries to make the dispatch on traits as generic as possible, as you've seen in the examples. One key thing is that there's no explicit nesting here in the syntax. You would have this for other implementations. And this allows for a couple of benefits, and especially that we can extend our traits dispatch. And now new, we can also implement an automatic ambiguity resolution. So let's check that one. We have another example here. And yeah, so we define a function called conflict with the trait on element type and iterator size has shape. So the one has the implementation element type wins and the other iterator size wins. If we call this, we see that it just works. But of course, there's a conflict here uh, sitting behind. And yeah, and this is the vector of number. And since now, we, since the last version, we have a really nice error message. So it mentions that ambiguity was found and it even tells us how we can resolve it. Namely, with a new macro called trades order. So let's try that. So what, how is this macro cons constructed? We have two arguments to the macro. This is the first one. This is the signature. So here in this example, we could leave out the T1 because we don't use it in the trades. But yeah, the automatic recommendation just gives it. And then we have the order of the trades and a begin end block, block one by line. And here we sell, say, element type wins over iterator size. And we can call it and see that this actually is the case. To understand how nice, how great this is, yeah, take a look at what we had to do before there was trades order. And before we need to manually implement the yeah, the conflict, the ambiguity, by specifying the case, which is the ambiguity, so number and test shape, and give our custom implementation. We see this still works, but of course, if you just want to refer to one of the definitions, you need to get into this package, get out the definition, and re-implement it here. And this makes for a complete maintenance mess. This is similar in standard Julia, but here for trades, you get this nice T that you can really order your trades and have an automatic fallback. Let's finally take a look at implementations. And yeah, so the conflicts are resolved actually on definition time. So everything is um, done if you define your trades function. You have a couple of trades and first the conflict recognizes the conflicting trades, in our case the iterator size and the element type. In the first example where there was no definition, no trades order defined between them, in the second example there's a trades order between them. So the second step, um, the algorithm takes a subgraph and yeah, and then the last step for each connected component of the subgraph it computes the attractor. So the winning trade, so to say. We see in the first part, we have still two left, so there's a conflict and we 
render an error message which says please define an order between them and in the second part there's no conflict and we can fall back to the element type definition. So finally let's take a look into the implementation. Each trace function um, on a high level is defined by three function layers with the outer function which call which then will call this new disambiguation layer which then will finally call the implementation the trace implementations. And with the special macro traits show implementation, which is just there for debugging purposes, we can take a look at um, our definition. And um, yeah, so this is really just for debugging. Um, but yeah, have a short look, and I hope this helps understanding what's going on. So the first layer is our outer function, which is just the thing which we call, and it will forward the call to the internal machinery. And this is way more complex, as you see. The first argument is just a singleton, and here you see it's a disambiguation singleton. So this makes clear this is going to the disambiguation function. Second argument is a standard signature, because we need to distinguish all the different possible outer functions. Then come standard arguments, with the arguments and the type variables. And finally the traits, where you see now the element type is taken and the iterator size is taken, standardized to a subtype relationship by taking the type of Okay, so then we have the inner functions, which have just the same dispatch, but you see they dispatch on the definition singleton. So they won't be called yet, but still it's good to see. They have the very same part, and the traits are kind of always different. So here the first inner function will dispatch on the element type being of number, and the iterator size is arbitrary. We have our definition, the element type wins. Oops, sorry. And the second definition which we gave is here, where the iterator size wins, but now we dispatch on the element type that can be arbitrary, and the iterator size is of has shape. So this is really the dispatch which we defined. And now finally there's the disambiguation layer, which are two functions. The first one just to pass through, we have arbitrary um, traits. So you see here this is the disambiguation singleton, sorry for skipping this. So this is really the intermediate layer, and the first one is passed through and will call now the definition part and just pass through the traits we're using the nice bar macro for having very expressive symbols and the final one is the conflict where we again have the disambiguation singleton and now we dispatch on the first element type number and the second iterator size of has shape so this is really the conflict and we get it resolved it calls now the inner function the definition singleton and passes the resolved traits. That's the number and the any in this example, so that the element type wins. So I hope you got an idea how complex this is and how nice it is to have a traits macro which encapsulate all this for you. Thank you for your attention. Try out where traits today. It's there in the standard registry. And if you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Stefan Sam, founder of Julien.io. We focus on Julia Consultancy in Central Europe, and I wish you a lovely conference.